Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 2 where last episode we landed on BOP, did the science that we needed to, left our rover behind, and now we are headed on out of here. We're currently headed up to the Apoapsis and we're going to escape the orbit of BOP here. That doesn't take very much of course. This is going to be a 60 meter per second burn and that will put us into this Julian periapsis here. Or rather this Julian orbit and that will be fine we'll use that to get ourselves back into interplanetary space and then from there we'll look for our actual route back home but we'll see what that ends up looking like there will definitely be some time warp involved I think let's head on forward we've got about one day until our burn here so goodbye bop it was certainly an experience no doubt about that of course, the fastest we can warp right now is 4x, which isn't exactly ideal. So we could hop back to the KFC and warp from there, and that's probably our best bet for right now. Let's go ahead and hop on back, because this is going to take a while at this point for us to get to a place where it's reasonably safe to warp at 4x speed. So let's hop on back to the KSC, go into the tracking station and warp from there. That will be faster. Assuming the KSC actually loads. I just started up the game, so it definitely should, but it's loading this fresh, so yeah, looks good. So we're gonna hop into the tracking station and we're going to head to Jewel, then Bop, then Fly Safe 24. I wanna focus that. And we are going to be warping until such a time as we're, like, here-ish. Or at least high enough up to where we can normal warp, right? Which is probably about... I mean, we can definitely normal warp while in control of the ship at this point. So let's just hop back into the fly safe 24. And at this point, yeah, we can definitely warp more normally. Perfect. So that will definitely save us a good amount of time even with the loading screen. Note how we're moving at seven meters per second right now. That's, uh, yeah. Bop has almost no gravity. This isn't surprising. Minute and a half until this burn, and now one minute, 50 seconds, 40, 30, 20, 10, and four, three, two, one, mark. And that should be escape velocity. 56 meters per second. Yep, that is indeed escape velocity. So at this point, we're just going to warp to about here. Goodbye, Bop. It was certainly an experience. No doubt about that. So we are now escaped from Bop. And the funny thing about that is, look how close we are to Bop. Its sphere of influence is teeny tiny. We're outside of its sphere of influence. We're in Jewel's sphere of influence now remarkable well from here all we're going to look to do is head home so that means we should be in a prograde orbit here um actually i think we're retrograde okay if we're retrograde then a prograde burn here should take us where we need to go in theory but this is going to be a big breaking burn when we get back to kerbin that's probably fine let's bring this down to about here or so yeah that's about the dunin orbit that seems reasonably fine our inclination is solid we probably don't need to do an inclination change out of curiosity if we were to mark kerbin as our target i don't think we could get any patch conics at this point uh, not the Comsat 1. I want Kerbin as our target. There we go. So we set Kerbin as our target. This is about a thousand meters per second to get us to this point. Actually, we are getting the inclination, which is intriguing. Let's bring this on in and see if it will tell us any timing information. It kind of is, actually. So this is intriguing. This is not too terrible in the timing. We can dial this in a bit. I don't know how successful we'll actually be at nailing this. <laughs> that's the that's the question here. We're going to need to go this way and then a little less on the radial. So 
So it's going to need to be something a little awkward, like this. But that's an encounter there. Remarkable. I'm actually shocked we're even getting Patch Conics here. But it's not a great encounter, as you can see. So we're going to look to dial that in a little bit. I'm not convinced we're going to hit this particularly accurately. We're definitely not going to hit this particularly accurately. Okay. So this is going to need to be... And it's not showing it right now. This is going to need to be like a radial burn. And I can't see the radial burn and our periapsis at the same time. That's mildly awkward. Ah, we can hear from this exact angle. Okay. So it's looking to be something kind of like that. What does prograde and retrograde do here? Mmm. It's very awkward. Okay. Relative speed is, of course, very high out over here. I'm wondering what the relative speed is here. We might not even want to do this, to be honest. Because we're definitely coming in retrograde, and I don't like that. So I'm thinking we should just abandon this concept. The question is... If we were to flip this from here, how much DV would that take? Six thousand? That's probably a lot less than what we're looking at. Now, we have some radial, we have some normal in there as well. I'm thinking we should probably think about flipping our orbit here, though. So this is our current orbit. And if we were to go to the apoapsis here... And we flipped this. What would that look like in terms of DV? That would be quite extensive. That would be about 3 kilometers per second. Noted. So instead, what I want to do is I want to push out our apoapsis here. To be nearly maximal. So way, way out there. That's an escape velocity. I don't want quite an escape velocity, but something like this. And then we'll flip around this orbit so that we're not going retrograde. This is not the most efficient way to do it. We should have changed when we were doing our escape from BOP, but this will be better than the alternative. So I think we've got a decent plan on how we're going to get there. We now just need to execute it. So that's fine. We're 11 days away from this burn at this point. And then we're going to flip around our directionality from here. It'll cost less DV than you think, and it'll be fine. And then we are going to go for an escape, but the question is when. This is going to be kind of awkward timing. I think we should just warp around right now, get this burn completed. And that's step one. Okay. So we're 21 minutes away, going to continue to warp forward a little bit here. 40 seconds, that's more like it. 30 seconds, 20, 10, and 3, 2, 1, mark. Okay, so about a 25 second burn here, raising our apoapsis, which this is something we would have to do anyway. We need to escape from Jewel, although not necessarily in this exact direction, but we do need to escape from Jewel, and so raising our apoapsis here is not a bad thing. We're going to then flip around our directionality from this very high point, and then push our periapsis out and kind of circularize. I don't love this inclination that we're at, but we'll see what that ends up looking like. It probably won't be that big of a deal. But you can see just how much surface velocity we have right now because we're in retrograde. And that's not ideal. Okay, I'm just slowing down our burn speed here a little bit because we know that this is very close to escape velocity. But there we go. Now, at the apoapsis, we're going to burn retrograde. And we're going to continue to burn retrograde until we flip around like that. And then we're going to circularize this right on out. I do not want to get a... Whoa. Um, I'm not clicking right now. That's... That's... That's exciting. Okay. Well, this is about what we want right here. So that'll work. Look at that. 460 meters per second to get this flipped and circularized. 
that's not bad. That is that is so good, actually. That is so little DV. Now we're in quite an inclination. We'll see what that ends up looking like once we make our way up to interplanetary space. But this will do for now. And we've got so much DV left in this thing. This is claiming 17.1 kilometers per second left. More than enough. So this is fine. Let's get ourselves into a prograde orbit here. And get this flipped right on around. We've got another four hours. Let's warp forward a little further than this. There we go. Two minutes is slightly better. And let's go this direction with the warp. Let's not pause the game. That's not very helpful. About one minute to go. Now about 20 seconds. Ten. And three, two, one. Mark. And this will be about a 20 second burn. Beautiful. Why is this burn here? Shouldn't this be a retrograde burn? We're in surface mode. That might have something to do with it. Orbit mode. Now this is a prograde burn. Yeah, this is now correct. Isn't it? Are we retrograde right now? Hang on. <laughs> Did I do it again? Maybe. Uh, let's see. Well, we're in quite an inclination. We, I don't care about whether we're retrograde here or not. The question is whether we are retrograde once we come into Kerbin, right? So if we made a maneuver plan right here, and we're about to find out whether we're retrograde or not. So if we made a maneuver plan right here, and we burn prograde, and we escape with that, does that push us into or away from the sun? Okay, so we are prograde now. Perfect. So that's looking good. And with Kerbin as our target, we can see we're in about a three degree inclination. That's not super shocking. And we would just bring this guy on in. We should now be coming in this, in this direction, right? Hang on. Uh, Kerbin is going this way, isn't it? Yeah. So we should be coming in this direction. And I think that is indeed the way that we're coming. Yeah, this is prograde here. So that seems like that should be correct-ish. Um, can I please select the prograde? I want to... Can I select the maneuver node? Okay, it's not wanting to let me select things. That is exciting. The maneuver node is not selectable at this point. This is stuck open. Okay, now the maneuver node selects. Sh sure. <laughs> Whatever. Can we prograde? Yes, we can. Okay. Let's bring this in, and let's see what this timing looks like. This is not bad. However, we are going to need a little bit of radial on it. Or, yeah, it is radial, it is not anti-radial. And that closed the maneuver node. Perfect. Just what we're looking for. Okay, let's try to dial this in. It is actually anti-radial. And a little bit of prograde, maybe? No, it's, it's a little bit of retrograde to pull that back out. Okay, so I think we're going to have to fine-tune this once we get to interplanetary space. Our ascending node is definitely pretty off here, and that radial burn is not helping. So we wanted this to be around 3.1, 3.0, yeah, sometime around here. So if we can rotate this, I don't know why this is so unsensitive right now, but this happens occasionally. Yeah, we can definitely dial that in once we get to interplanetary space. Let's call that our primary burn, and then we'll do a secondary fine-tuning burn from interplanetary space. That'll be okay. So this will be about 1,700 meters per second. We'll get aligned for that. And, of course, where is Jewel right now? Should Jewel not be directly down? Pretty sure it should be. Maybe it's so far away that we can't see it at this point. We're just barely within its gravitational influence. So yeah, I'm I'm betting that's what this is. Okay, so we're going to warp around. Our timing is not amazing right now, but it's going to be pretty decent. We're going to hop on out over here, and we're going to do a fine-tuning burn once we exit the Julian sphere of influence, which will be quite quick. But this will be about a one-minute burn, and that's understood. We'll warp forward a little further than this, and let's hop out here where, hopefully, we can actually see what we've got going on a bit. Okay. And then we're going to fine-tune this burn in, which we always were going to need to do. We could wait until we're at this descending node, and that might not be the worst of ideas. 
we'll see what that ends up looking like. We're 30 seconds away from our escape burn, though, and that looks good. Okay, two, one, mark. Fantastic. So that is going to be a little bit over a minute on the burn. I don't think I'm going to warp it. I feel like warping burns in this game causes efficiency loss. I don't really have evidence for that statement, but it definitely has issues like basically everything else in KSP2, to be honest. So there is that. So let's bring this on in, and then we're going to experiment with a maneuver outside of Julian space. About 40 seconds left here. I do think this descending node is an interesting opportunity to do a corrective burn. And bring us into position for returning home. This is looking like a pretty good encounter here, potentially. And let's see about dialing that in a bit. Cool. So this is, of course, a very hefty burn, and we are escaping from the jewel that we are too far away to see. But we are going to eventually run out of fuel in these side stages. I suspect that will be the breaking burn once we arrive at Kerbin, because that is definitely going to be a bit of a thing. We're going to have a fair amount of speed, and we're going to have to, to get rid of that. At least a significant chunk of it. We're going to want to dip down as close as we can to Kerbin to optimize that burn. But we'll see how that goes. We have so much DV left in this, I'm deeply unconcerned. If we were coming in retrograde, it might be a little too much, but we're coming in prograde here, in theory. I hope we're coming in prograde. We should be. We've got about four seconds left on this burn. Three, two, one, and I'm gonna call that good. And now what we need to do is we need to warp until we have exited the Julian Sphere of Influence because we've got some awkwardness going on with our with our projections here. So we need to exit this Sphere of Influence just like this. There we go. And now we are heading this direction, but Jewel is heading this direction. We should be relatively fine in this regard. And I want to focus on Kerbal for right now, and we can see what happens if we just come over here and fix our inclination. It's a three degree inclination change. It's going to be this direction. Okay. So something like that. That gets us a very close encounter over here. It's not quite where we want to be. So we can look at dialing that in a little bit. I want to pin this open. And we can see our relative speed here is about three kilometers per second. That's not bad. That is ballpark of where I expected it to be. So we're going to need to toss in a small amount of radio, likely. And our intersect changed on us. Okay. I'm not entirely sure why, but we might need to... Okay, that's actually an encounter there. Cool. So let's take a look at what that encounter is looking like. It is currently looking like this. 28,000 kilometers. Let's see about a little bit more radial pushed in here. Okay. This is looking good. 63 kilometers, that's a little too close. We want this to be like 100-ish kilometers. 122 would do. So we'll call this good. I don't know that we're going to nail this burn. In fact, we very likely won't. I want to shut down these engines. This is only 177 meters per second. So I'm going to deactivate these side engines for right now. And we're just going to run this engine. I'm going to keep it at 100% thrust for the moment because we're going to need to get through the first portion of this, right? But that is relatively fine. So what I want to do now is I want to just slightly tweak this burn so that it recalculates. It's not recalculating our thrust to weight, is it? Hmm. Okay, that is definitely not ideal that it hasn't recalculated that. I wonder if we were to reload this, if it would. So I'm going to make a save here. And we're going to reload this game. 
and see if that will cause it to recalculate our thrust to weight, because it's still assuming that we're running all engines there. It's not recalculating that. So let's load this in and see if it did. It, uh, it did not. Okay. Well, oh, now it did. I just had to reset it by opening the map and closing it, which is something I normally have to do because it puts us in the wrong orientation here. But yeah, that did recalculate it. So that's perfect. Let's warp on forward. And this is now going to be a 33 second burn, which is going to be much more manageable. I'm not going to call it super manageable, but it'll be more manageable. So with that reload, I want to see if this massively... Oh, wow, this looks horrible. Can we can we not do that, please? Thank you. I want to select Kerbin. I want to see if this changed our actual orbit here. I don't want Comsat 1 open. Okay, this is 24 kilometers. We'll have to dial that in. This is definitely incorrect, but that's fine for now. Let's just warp forward these last few days as we're coming in. Okay, so now we've got about four hours. We'll continue to warp forward a little bit. Now we've got about two minutes. And one minute. I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, this is going to be coming in this direction. It's it's relatively fine. I don't care about being prograde or retrograde versus the rotation of Kerbin. That'll be okay. So, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, 20, 10, and 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. Okay, so this is going to be a 33 second burn. We could get this burn done a lot faster. These are all stuck open and I wish that they weren't, but whatever, it's fine. We're just going to get this burn done a little bit more slowly and carefully. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna be angling for a periapsis of about a hundred kilometers here. So once we see a, our maneuver come in here, I'm going to cut the throttle immediately. We're going to try to burn very, very, very gently and bring it down to 100 kilometers. It should be popping in fairly soon. There it is. Okay. It's actually coming down fairly slowly. So we're just going to burn at full throttle for right now. We've got about two seconds left on this burn. I'm going to cut the throttle now. This is 10,000 kilometers. 5,000. Okay, this is overshooting a little bit. So we're going to need to clear this maneuver, and I want to bring us over to radial out. And we're going to dial this in with some manual maneuvers here. I'm going to cut this down to about 5% thrust, actually 10% thrust, just to make this be a little bit more manageable. And we're going to be in radial out, and we're going to hop over to curb in here. And pin open this periapsis, which will be in about a little under a year. Okay, that sounds good. And we're going to just bring this guy in a bit. We're going to want to maybe change the inclination a little too. We'll see what that looks like. Yes, inclination should now be changed. So we'll take this into anti-radial, or rather anti-normal. We're at 446 kilometers here. This looks pretty decent. You can see just how much our orbit gets warped by the gravity of Kerbin. That's a very good sign for our braking burn. Okay, so here we are at anti-normal. Let's find out if this is the correct direction. I believe anti-normal should be right. Yes. Looks good. 300 kilometers, 200, and 90 kilometers. That'll do. I am delighted by this. So now, of course, what we need to do is we need to warp to that encounter. So which one is our current one? This outer one. Gotcha. We're going to warp to about here, and that is, of course, going to have us fall on down. And we're just building up more and more and more speed as we fall towards this periapsis. We'll have to do a braking burn once we get up here, but that is absolutely expected. The question is, how much is this breaking burn going to be? Let's warp into the sphere of influence of Kerbin. And at this point, I'm wondering what our surface velocity is. This is claiming 24,000 meters per second. 
I don't know about that. Well, at any rate, we are going to hop on over here. And at the periapsis, we're going to do a retrograde burn. With the idea being we just... Oh, right. This is going to be a problem. We are going to need to unthrust limit this. I want this to be at, like, retrograde for now. We're going to unthrust limit this. We're going to activate these four engines. Not independent throttle. Activate. There we go. So all of those engines are now active, and that will give us a lot more thrust to weight. Now we're going to hop over to Kerbin and do that retrograde burn and put ourselves ideally into a circularized orbit here. We'll see how much DV that ends up being. Okay. That's relatively doable. We're going to want to have this be about here in terms of timing, probably. Maybe a bit more like... What, what is this? Okay. Can I can I please select this? That would be great. Thanks. Maybe a bit more like this. What's this periapsis at? Yeah, we can drop that down a little further. No doubt about that. Okay. So our timing is, of course, not ideal here. But this is going to be about 2,700 meters per second. That seems pretty doable. And, I mean, this puts us in a reasonable orbit. It's not by any means perfect. We can just dial in that periapsis a little bit lower. Down to about 53 kilometers is a little too low. Let's put this at about like 72. Okay, this'll do. I don't really care about the inclination. This is all fine. Let's just align for that burn, but it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're gonna bring these guys on home and finish this mission. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you, that is not the button I'm looking for, a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Atala, Andy McGar, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Tommy Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.